Our goals for the measurements and units lesson are to define what a typesetter's ruler is and identify common measurements that might be on a typesetter's ruler that you might have to use as a future uh, employee in the graphic arts industry. We'll mainly focus on inches, so we'll define what an inch is and how to measure inches using fractions. Then we'll practice measuring using fractions and then converting those fractions to decimals. Um, the goal of this lesson is to establish a systematic way to use a ruler. So a lot of this you probably already know, um, but the steps that we're going to follow are the same steps that you could translate for any measurement system. So in the graphic arts industry, you may use inches or centimeters. You might use points and picas and things like that. But establishing a process for using that ruler is really what the goal is of this lesson. So rulers come in all shapes and sizes. Some are used by construction workers, some by elementary school children, and other are used by graphic arts professionals. Each ruler has a set of measurements, often more than one set of measurements, that are specific to the need of the user. In our industry, we use a typesetter's ruler, also referred to as an e-gauge. It is a ruler designed to be used by graphic arts professionals, and it may include inches, centimeters, picas, points, weights or the thickness of a line, line screens for printing, and grayscale values. The bottom example here is an example of an e-gauge or a typesetter's ruler. In general, they would be transparent and you can see through them, but you might also find these measurements on different types of rulers that are metal. Um, you'll notice that these are measuring points and inches, um, and it's not transparent, but the transparent ones make it easier to measure. So a typesetter's ruler or an e-gauge comes in many different shapes and sizes, and as I already said, transparent rulers are much easier to use than opaque since the ruler can be placed directly over the type or the line that a designer is trying to measure. If you choose to use an opaque ruler, you must understand that the measurements are going to be harder to capture, but it's not impossible. Depending on what you're measuring, it might be more or less appropriate to use a transparent ruler. Most typesetters rulers do not come with cork backs, which is what we generally recommend as a good ruler. Um, so for this reason, it's a good idea not to use them for drawing. They're just for measuring. You don't want to use them for drawing lines and things like that because corked back rulers prevent bleeds and smearing and things like that with wet ink on paper. So this is an example of a typesetter's ruler and I've identified some of the measurements that are on here. It's a little hard to read because the image is blurry, um, but what I would like is that if you have a typesetter's ruler or you have any ruler, um, look at your ruler and see what measurements you have on there. So on this ruler I have leading, which is the spacing between lines of type, inches, point values, I have an e-gauge for measuring type, picas, and I have weight or the thickness of a line. Um, when you are measuring, you want to make sure that you're always comparing apples to apples. So when you are going to use your ruler, if you need to know how big something is in inches, you need to make sure that your ruler has inches. For this class, you need to have an inches ruler that can measure inches, and those inches must be able to be broken down into sixteenths of an inch, which we'll cover later in this lesson. So what are inches? An inch is the name of a unit of length in a number of different measurement systems, including imperial units and the United States customary units. There are 36 inches in a yard and 12 inches in a foot. Corresponding units of area and volume are the square inch and the cubic inch of, a, of size. There are many different measurement systems, but since we are all measuring the same items, there will always be an equivalent size in the alternate measurement system. So for example, I may choose to measure the height of my house in inches, but someone else can use feet or yard or even meters. And so some common conversions are, as stated previously on the slide, 36 inches is the equivalent of one yard, 12 inches is the equivalent of one foot, and in, in the graphic arts industry, one inch is the equivalent of 72 points, or one inch is also the equivalent of 72 picas. So you could say that 72 points, um, sorry, one inch is also the equivalent of 12 picas. So you could say that 72 points is also equal to 12 picas. And then just because we have different measurement systems doesn't mean we couldn't convert. So one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters or 25.4 millimeters. You can always convert, um, but it's best to work in the same measurement systems. Um, 
it helps to avoid um, conversion issues. Let's identify inches. Inches, and other me measurements for that matter, are most often referred to as a portion of a whole number. That's why it's extremely important to be able to, one, identify portions of an inch as a fraction, which is what this lesson is all about, and two, you need to be able to convert them to decimals for frequent use. We will use fractions when measuring with a ruler and decimals uh, when entering measured values into a calculator or graphic art software application. So when you measure something and you use inches, you need to be able to then convert it to a decimal if you have to like sum things together or use a calculator. Measurements in fraction form can be converted into decimal format by dividing the numerator of the fraction by the denominator. And then any whole numbers can be added back in at the end. So for example, when I have 1 16th of an inch, 1 divided by 16 equals 0 0.0625. So if I needed to punch that into a calculator, I could punch in 0 0.0625. 3 fourths of an inch is 3 divided by 4, which comes out to 0.75. 1 inch divided by 1 is a whole number, so it's just 1 inch. This is a blown up version of a standard ruler. There are lots of different lines, usually of varying lengths, that indicate where a half inch or a fourth inch, etc., are located. This is an example of a sixteenth inch ruler because it shows measurements as small as 1 sixteenth of an inch or 0 0.0625 of an inch. You must have a sixteenth of an inch ruler for this class. Standard rulers should be at least one sixteenth of an inch. If your ruler also includes thirty seconds of an inch, um, you can use it. Just ignore those values. If it doesn't have as many hash marks as you see here, um, then you have a ruler that doesn't go down to one, 30, uh, one sixteenth of an inch, and it will not work for this class. So let's start by identifying what these measurements mean on the ruler. The orange lines in this diagram indicate where whole inches are, so please take a minute to identify these on your own ruler. Some rulers use a tiered system to display the different measurement lines, like in my example, while others do not. Either way, you need to find where the one inch markings are on your own ruler. In a tiered system, the next level down would cut that one inch in half, so they're half inch markings. Please take a minute to identify these on your ruler. You will notice that the half inch markings are the ones in between the inches, but also they include the inches. That is because the one inch marks also correspond to a half inch section. So between zero and this second red line is half an inch, and from the second um, red line to the third line is also a half an inch. So each of these sections now represent a half an inch of length. If we take it one step further, the next tiered step tiered system down uh, represents half of that, which is a fourth of an inch. Again, between zero and the first, in this example, red um, hash mark is one quarter of an inch, one fourth of an inch. And each one of these sections is a fourth. And we can visually see that one fourth plus one fourth equals a half. And then another half, um, sorry, one fourth and one fourth is another half, and half an inch plus half an inch equals an inch. What's important to note is that every time we step down this tiered system of hash marks, we must include all of the hash marks that are bigger. So all of the half inch hash marks, these ones here, they include all of the one inch marks. And all of the quarter inch or one fourth inch marks include the half inch marks and the whole inch marks. If we take it one step further and we cut these in half, we go from one fourth to one eighth. Now we're including almost all of the lines. The distance between each red hash mark, whether it's what we're calling an eighth, a fourth, a half, or a whole inch mark, represents an eighth of an inch. So it's an eighth of an inch here, an eighth of an inch, an eighth of an inch, an eighth of an inch. Um, if we add them together, eight of them equals one inch. One, each section is one eighth. So if we have eight of those, we have eight one eighth sections, which equals an inch. So we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we could take it one step further by highlighting the sixteenth of an inch sections. So each little section here represents one sixteenth of an inch. And if you put sixteen of them together, it will be a whole inch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 sections at 1 16th of an inch equals 1 inch. Please take a minute to make sure that you can identify where the 1 inch, half inch, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, and 1 16th inch markings are on your ruler. If you have additional markings, so if you have a hash mark in between these ones, usually really tiny, really short, um, those are 1 32nd of an inch, and it's, it's okay to have those on your ruler. We just won't be using them for our course. So now how do we use this knowledge about breaking down the hash marks on a ruler to be able to identify the length of something we're measuring? We're going to do that using fractions, and the steps that we will follow are to first identify the level at which you're measuring. Is that line a whole inch, a fourth of an inch, a sixteenth of an inch, a thirty-second of an inch, etc.? Two, we're then going to count the hash marks or the bars in your level. So remember, your level includes all of the levels above it um, from left to right we don't count the first bar. And then we're going to put the counted number that we counted for your hash mark over the fraction that you've identified and we can then reduce that fraction. And I know that probably sounds confusing so let's walk through it together. So to identify the measurement for the red mark in this example, we have measured a line and it measures out to this red hash mark. We must first identify that it falls on a 1 16th inch set of marks, right? These are the 1 inch marks, half inch, fourth of an inch, eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch. So the first thing we have to do is decide that measurement is a 1 16th level measurement. Then we need to count how many hash marks out from the beginning it is. Zero doesn't count because you haven't gone yet. As soon as you go to a hash mark, it counts as one. So when I go to this next sixteenth of a level hash mark, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So when I count to nine, I end up with nine sixteenth inch marks. So I would put nine over sixteen and I would say that this line measures as 9 sixteenths of an inch. You can see here that what happens is I count every hash mark and every hash mark is numbered, right? So the first one I get to would end up being 1 sixteenth of an inch and then 2 sixteenths of an inch and then 3 sixteenths and 4 sixteenths and I count this one I get all the way up to 9 sixteenths of an inch. The last step is to reduce the fraction if it can be reduced. If I can divide the top of the fraction, the numerator, by the same thing I can divide the bottom by, the denominator, I can reduce the fraction. So 9 can be divided by 1 and 3, but I cannot divide 16 by 3, so this answer is 9 sixteenths. But if I was looking at 4 sixteenths right here, I can divide the top and the bottom of that fraction by 4. So I can reduce 4 sixteenths and I could say it's 1 fourth of an inch, which if we look at the hash mark that it's leveled at, we can see that it's a whole inch, a half inch, it's at one fourth of an inch. Okay, so let's practice identifying fractions of an inch. Since this should be review, I'm not going to go through any more examples with you. I want you to pause the video here and see if you can calculate the measurements for these six examples. Don't move forward until you've given these a try, and then when you're done, move forward and we'll review the answers together. In the first example, we need to identify the mark at which it's at. So it's at a whole, half, fourth. So our fraction right away, we know it's going to be some number over four, because it's at a one-fourth of an inch level. We can then count the hash marks between our mark and there, but we're only counting one-fourth of a level and higher. So in this case, we're going to skip all of the eighth and sixteenth inch hash marks. So starting at zero, we're going to count the first one-fourth hash mark, which would make it one-fourth of an inch. We can count the one-half inch mark, because it's taller, 
and it would be 2 over 4. If we reduce that, it would be 1 half of an inch. And then we get to the third one, and it becomes 3 fourths of an inch. In example 2, we need to identify that it's at the 16th inch level. We have a whole, half, fourth, eighth, sixteenth. And then when we count, we do not count zero, so the first one we get to is one. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. We put fifteen on the top of our fraction, and then the bottom or the denominator will be the level at which we're measuring, which is sixteen. So our answer is fifteen sixteenths, and we cannot reduce that, so that's the correct answer. Quickly, the rest of the answers are whole number, half, fourth, eighth, and if we count just the, the hash marks that are at that level or higher, we go one, two, three, so we'll have three on the top of our fraction and eight on the bottom. Three eighths cannot be reduced, so that's the correct answer. This one, number four, should be pretty easy. It lands on one, so it's a whole number. Number five, again, is a sixteenth of an inch, so we're going to count every hash mark between there and the red mark. So going from zero to one is one, two, and three. Three goes into the numerator, and then our denominator is sixteen. Three sixteenths cannot be reduced, so we'll leave that as the answer. And again, there's another one that's at a sixteenth of an inch, so we're going to count every hash mark between here and there. Starting at zero, when I get to number one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine over sixteen is the answer, and uh, it cannot be reduced. Okay, I want you to practice these again. It's just another way to practice um, what we were just reviewing. But in this case, what if you measure a line that's multiple inches? So in this case, our ruler starts at one inch. So we've measured something on our ruler and it gets measured all the way down to this red line. So it's one and some value. So what I want you to do is to still calculate the value of the fraction, but then add it to one. So if, it's, if it lands between one and two, it's one and whatever the fraction is. Give that a try and see how you do and we'll review the answers on the next slide. So these problems will be done exactly the same way as the first set. We're just going to add the whole number back in after we've done our measurement. So if we were measuring between 16 inches and 17 inches, it would be 16 and whatever we measure our fraction to be. So if we take a look at example one, we're measuring at the whole inch, half inch, fourth inch, eighth inch. And then we can count all of the eighth inch or higher markers. So going from one, we have uh, one and, so we have one, two, three, four, five. So this would be five over eight, but because we're past one inch, it would be one and five eighths. Example two is at a one sixteenth inch uh, marking. So we have our one inch, our whole inch, half, fourth, eighth, sixteenth, so it's at a sixteenth level. We'll count all the hash marks between where the, the ruler starts, counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Since we counted eleven, we'll put eleven over sixteen. It cannot be reduced. It's between one and two, so it'll be one and eleven sixteenths. Our next example is at the whole half, fourth, eighth of an inch marking. So we'll count all the hash marks. So from the beginning, we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Because I count, count all of the eighth inch markings or higher. So we'll put seven over eight. Because it's past the one inch, it'll be one and seven eighths. Example four is at the whole half inch marking. So we'll count all of the whole and the half inches. So from here, it's just whole. The first one we get to is the half. So it's one over two. Because it's past the first inch, it's one and one half. The next one is another one eighth. So it's whole, half, fourth, eighth. And it's one hash mark in, because we don't count the sixteenths because that's smaller. So it's one over eight. 
because it's past one inch, it's one and one eighth. And then example number six, it lands on the whole inch. So in this case, since it lands on two inches even, the answer is just two inches. The first step to being able to work properly with the ruler is being able to identify fractions on your ruler, which is what we just did. The second step is to be able to convert those fractions into decimals for quick calculations. The way that you will do this is dividing the numerator by the denominator, and you can convert any fraction into a decimal. So if we had 1 16th, we could divide the numerator 1 by the denominator 16, and when we plug that into our calculator, we will get 0 0.0625. You can see some examples on this slide, so 3 eighths of an inch is 3 divided by 8, and that comes out to 0.375. The fractions that you see on the screen here are very common fractions that you'll use all of the time, so you should commit them to memory. So let's practice converting some measurements, not just into fractions, but into decimals. Give these a shot on your own, and when you're done, we'll review the answer. So the first example, it calculates, calculates out to 9 sixteenths of an inch because it's on the sixteenth of an inch level for measurement. And when we count out, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We'll put 9 over 16 to convert it to a fraction, but in these problems we want to convert it to a decimal. So when we plug 9 divided by 16 into our calculator, it comes out to 0.5625. For measurement 2, the answer is 1 and 1 eighth because the measurement is at the 1 eighth inch level, so this is whole, half, fourth, and eighth, and then when I count to do the fraction, I only count one hash out, so I do 1 over 8, but because it's past the 1 inch mark, it's actually 1 and 1 eighth. To do this, there are two ways to convert this to a decimal. When you have 1 and, you can replace the and with a decimal, so you can do 1 point and then do the math for 1 divided by 8 which comes out to 1.25. You can also convert this to an improper fraction. So for those of you interested, to convert it to an improper fraction, you would multiply the denominator times the whole number and then add the numerator. So in this case you could do 8 times 1 is 8 plus 1 is 9 and this fraction would be 9 divided by 8. When you plug that into your calculator, 9 divided by 8 will come out to 1.125 it's much easier to just take the whole number off the fraction, convert the fraction to a decimal, and then add the whole number back in. Example three comes out to three eighths, right? Whole, half, fourth, eighth, and we count the hash, it's one, two, three, so it's three over eight. Three divided by eight comes out to 0.375. Example four is three fourths of an inch. It's at the whole, half, one fourth inch level, so the bottom, of our fraction will be a 4, and then if we count the hashes at that level or higher, we get 1, 2, 3. So 3 over 4, or 3 divided by 4, comes out to 0 0.75. Number 5 came out to 1 and 7 eighths, just the fraction. We are measuring at the whole half, fourth, eighth inch level. So then we count our, our hashes. We go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So our fraction is 7 on the top over 8, but because we've passed the 1 inch mark, the measurement is 1 and 7 eighths. So we can do, we can take the 1 and put it aside. 7 divided by 8 is 0.875. Then you can add the 1 back in, so it's 1.875. If you wanted to create an improper fraction, you could do 8 times 1 is 8. 8 plus 7 is 15. This improper fraction would be 15 over 8, and when you divide 15 over 8, it will come out to 1.875. Okay, our last example came out to 15 sixteenths because we have whole, half, fourth, eighth, sixteenth of an inch measurements. When we count out, if we counted all these hash marks, it comes out to the 15th hash mark. So we'll put 15 over 16, and when we plug that into our calculator, 15 divided by 16 is 0.9375. After reviewing this lesson, you should be able to understand what a typesetter's ruler is and what we would use for it. You should be able to list or identify common measurements that might be on a typesetter's ruler. You should define what inches are and be able to identify 
where the inches are on your ruler and how to identify the different levels at which you would measure, so whole, half, fourth, eighth, sixteenth of an inch. You should be able to list the steps for identifying fractions of an inch, and you should be able to now measure lines based on uh, those fractions, and then convert those fractions into decimals if you had to use them for another application. If you have any questions or you need help with this exercise, please attend online office hours or my weekly live info session.